Okay, so I think the first place we have to start is, as I mentioned, in studying a, around 100 to 150 of these tablets from the Sumerian, Akkadian, and Babylonian civilizations, <clears throat> I, once I knew the translations were as accurate as possible, I then went on a crusade. And you showed that timeline that I had before, yeah, I still have the 200,000-year timeline. Mm -hmm. My crusade began with the idea that I wanted to recreate the ancient world and the story of history from the best available evidence we can. And that I firmly believed that the information within these tablets um, from Mesopotamia was being ignored is essentially what the focus became. Because mainstream thought it was a myth and a legend, it wasn't real. The crusade for me was to try to understand how these, this civilization that emerged that was supposedly the first ever on earth, ever, and, that, and we'll get into that in a second, but how that led to everything else. Mm. That's what this is all about. It's about putting breadcrumbs together in puzzle pieces to recreate history in a way where we don't only, not only are we shattering paradigms, but we're paving a completely new road that's never been paved. I have a quick question just before you go all the way deep on yeah. that, because it's been permeating throughout this whole time where I'm like, well, where could this tie in? Evolutionarily, if we're okay. talking about multiple different generations across catastrophe, it means that human beings were something very close to us across these different spectrums of time existed, meaning we evolved obviously a very, very long time ago. So do yeah. you have any thoughts on when exactly that happened and what yeah. the first parts of like what we would consider air quotes like human, yeah. uh, I guess, like presence on this planet? The reason why I, I did a 200,000 year timeline is not just circumstantial evidence. What we find, and I really would encourage people to look into the work of Lloyd Pye. Lloyd, like P-I? P-Y-E. P-Y-E. Okay. He was a genius in my mind. And I don't agree with everything he said in regards to some let's say, some of what he connected with ancient Sumer and everything, but what he was an expert on is looking at genetic traits of humans. He basically was an expert at studying genetic traits and looking for diversions within our, our, mm. the lines of humans. And what he found was that 200,000 years ago, supposedly the exact uh, creation of the first city and this maybe even referencing the whole like Adam and Eve type of story, just the creation, some, some kind of a taking a, a blueprint of a human, like a Neanderthal Deniso Denisovian, and somehow something else completely emerges. Something comes out of nowhere that's not as related to that as we think, a a as, as sure. related to Neanderthal and Denisovians, something totally different, something that is more like a child of the universe where we have uh, it's it's really weird how, like, for instance, the Earth has almost the exact same amount of water as we do in our body, and how the, our, our blood is composed of iron. It's the same core that the Earth spins. We're, like, perfectly designed for this Earth is the best way to describe it. Yes. Like, per perfect here, okay? But not in a way where we're supposed to be hunter-gathering or living primitively. We no longer, all of a sudden, the hair mostly lost off our body. He, dis he discusses how all of the traits that would be necessary for us to survive in the way we've been told just all of a sudden vanished. And some would be like, well, evolutionarily, they, they, re they don't need them anymore. But no, this happened like out of nowhere. It's not like is a slow thing. And we've also never observed any kind of a primate in any stage of a change over the course of human history ever. Never. Not even one slight change where it was like converting into something else. And I'm not someone who's completely against all aspects of evolution. Sure. I want to make that clear. What I realize is that based on others is that evolution may be more based on um, the macro versus the micro. So like some, mm. for instance, I think that something, an animal, yes, can, can, can develop more hair, change things like, yeah, those things absolutely happen. But for something to be able to, for instance, go from um, a giraffe or like a whale to us, I don't understand how that'd be possible. And I want to give an example of that. I talk about how in Australia, there's a creature there that proves that I, I believe it proves that evolution isn't exactly what we've been told. Not What's the creature? The platypus. Are you familiar with the platypus? Yes, I am familiar with the platypus. Platypus is the weirdest goddamn animal on earth. Okay? <laughs> I'll put a picture in the corner of the screen okay. for people who aren't familiar. It's a mammal that lays eggs. 
that's poisonous. Mm. That is supposed to be like a half bird, half duck. It's it doesn't make sense. But is it possible that something like that was through evolution and the diversity that it was across these millions of species? It happened to be located in an area that evolved it to be a hybrid type animal? It's potential, but I want to give it an, an example for why I think that's not true. Okay. Lloyd Pye pointed out this really weird thing about humans. I don't know if you know this yet, but humans have 46 chromosomes and all primates have 48. All primates on I Earth. I didn't know that. Every single primate has 48 chromosomes. It has to do with packages of DNA, basically. Yes. Okay. What they found within the human, human homo sapiens sapien was that there was something within our DNA where parts of it had been like altered. Yeah, I'm like serious. And they, what they call those alterations and those things that scientists don't know, they call it junk DNA. That's what, ah. that's what scientists call it. Because when they compared every other comparable thing on earth genetically, they found this small little area within our genetics that doesn't match anything on the planet. Is it possible that we are still too primitive, technologically speaking, to properly test something like that? Perhaps. But here's the thing that's weird. Like, like Randall says, we've been taught everything's based on gradualism, whether it's geology or genetics. In, or evolutionary changes, meaning things happen very slowly over a very long period of time. However, we know from these disasters that that's not true. We know that the earth does go through periods when extreme things happen. It doesn't happen all the time, yeah, but it yeah, does yeah. happen, yeah. okay? Those extreme moments also seem to have occurred with us. And what I mean is, not only take the chromosome thing for a minute, like which is very, very strange, because how something like a splicing of a DNA or altering w could happen naturally... It, I've, had, I've seen no anthropologist or scientist that can explain that. It's not talked about because it's sort of like hush-hush. The yeah. whole junk DNA aspect of this, because we do share like 98% with, every, with like a cow. I really do. One, one of the types of guests I haven't had in here yeah. that I want to have in very badly is like an evolutionary biologist. Yeah, Lloyd Pye died though, unfortunately. Really no, sad. no, I, I, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, talk, I'm yeah. talking about, I'm talking about like just a, a, a general one, one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to go through it. And what, what Lloyd Pye also determined, besides the chromosomes and besides the human body totally changing, structurally too, it started to take on characteristics that were um, not suitable to survive out in the in, in the wilds at all. Like what? Our ability to, like, for instance, we're not strong anymore at all. Neanderthals and Denisovians yeah. were unbelievably strong. Right. We, we, the strength of what we are is like nothing compared to what they are. The way that we have genetic diseases and the way our bone structure is and everything, it's like it was designed in a way to, to function for a different reason, to not be living off the land, to function as something with like a greater purpose yes. is the way I would describe yes. it. Okay. And what Lloyd discovered was that 200,000 years ago, the human brain more than doubled in size. 200,000 years ago. At once. Yes. Out of nowhere. And then we're, we go to places like Gobekli Tepe to bring it back home to that. They radiocarbon date those pillars to be 11,600 years old. But they find, this is what's fascinating, that when they dig down through the layers underneath Gobekli Tepe to try to like, basically give a time timeline of figuring out sure. when things happened, they find something so unusual that you're never going to hear anyone mainstream talking about it. They find that at the Gobekli level, Gobekli level, that they had this advanced, I mean, with agriculture and other things that came out of nowhere. Like, literally, there's like a layer where all of a sudden agriculture and all these things start happening. And then the layer right below it, they find hunter-gatherer evidence. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.